Hey! So at the start of Cyberpunk, you can pick one of three origin stories. I thought they were going to affect the story, but they're as important as fucking algebra was in finding me a proper job, because they all just converged to the same point like 10 minutes in. Anyway, yeah, that's it. Tell your mum I'll be picking her up at 7, and thanks to these guys for the suggestion. Load up Cyberpunk. Start a new game. Welcome to a hand with a fucking USB port. What is that? URV. Yeah, that's your name. The doctor must have died while typing up your birth certificate. You're in a bar unbreaking your nose when the bartender Pepe asked you to help him with a debt and of course you agreed to help him since he's a good friend of yours. So good, in fact, that we will never see him again. His debt lies with Kirk, who says you can just pay it off by stealing a car for him with his state-of-the-art doohickey, and you're not above getting your fingers up in the thieving pie, but you get interrupted by another thief, and he has a much more useful stealing tool. A gun. Not that it matters, because the police come and break your nose again. Your nose has seen more action in the first five minutes than I've seen in 25 years of life. You make friends with the thief guy, his name's Jackie Wells, and as the saying goes, thieves who get arrested together... Also, go kill a bunch of people and become best friends or some bullshit. Six months later and you're on a job rescuing someone from some bad guys with Jackie and your hacker friend T-Bug. You end up finding whoever you're looking for in a tub of ice cubes and- Oh my god, that's a nipple! She gets picked up by an ambulance and you nearly get kidnapped on the way home, which I guess is just like a regular fucking day for you. Then Jackie is like, I got us a job with Dexter Deshaun, who's like some big time money guy, I don't fucking know. First things first, you need to visit a ripper dog who's also your mate called Victor. I've not explained this, but it's the future and you have the contents of a Dell PC squashed into your body. Ripper dogs are like of an IT guy and a surgeon had a kid and they fit new upgrades onto you. Finally, you meet Deshaun. He has a job for you to steal a biochip from Arasaka. They're basically upper-class rich cops in suits. To do the stealing, you need a military gadget called a flathead. Although it's a military gadget, you have to get it off some guys who look like they sniff marker pens in dumpsters. And the actual military tries to kill you while you do it, but you escape and meet the client, Evelyn Parker. To figure out what we're stealing from where, she gets you to brain dance with the help of a friend, Judy. She is making me feel some things with that side eye of hers. Brain dancing is just a live recording with free cam mode. You can use it to scan the environment. Evelyn was in sexy cahoots with Yorinobu Arasaka. He's the Arasaka boss's son, I think, and that's how she managed to get an 8K recording of his bed sheets where the chip is. You, Jackie, and T-Bug then meet up with Deshaun to talk about the plan. So first we go into the building, then we take the chip. You're a genius. Yeah, that was that was pretty good. You and Jackie break into the hotel by wearing suits and waffling a bit of shit. Did you ever watch the film, uh, what's it called? Kingsman. Yeah, they, uh, they based that film on us. Wasn't that film about spies in England? Aren't you Spanish? Yeah, yeah, don't sweat the details. It's not like we're spies who've come in to steal the biochip. What? Biochip? Using the flat edge, you get T-Bug onto the subnet and make your way to Yorinobu's penthouse. As you're breaching the safe, some VIP turns up, which leads to Yorinobu coming back. Lucky for you, he has a random hidey hole behind his TV that all rich could probably have. I don't know, I'd shop at Aldi. This hidey hole ends up being a front row seat to an argument between Yorinobu and his dad, Saburo. My son, do you know why I come to you today? No, father. It is because I am uh, concerned by your lack of bitches. <laughs> Oh no, someone murdered my father. Without even realizing you've nicked the biochip, Yorinobu just straight up chokes his dad and puts the building on lockdown. T-Bug tries to unlock the door to the balcony and just like, and dies. And then you and Jackie try to reach the fire escape and in response, this drone is like, nah, fuck you. In the fall, the chip's container got damaged so it started to degrade. So Jackie holds onto it in his head hole and you have to fight your way through the tower. Jackie got shot by the drone too. So when you do escape into an AI powered taxi called Delamain, which is perfectly fine with you being a criminal, I don't know, it must've been like a slow day. He bleeds out and now you're carpooling with a corpse. This is still better than James Corden. Just before he died, he gave you the chip and you go to meet Deshaun to collect that sweet payment. Uh... Is the payment supposed to hurt? What's up, bitch? I'm gonna assume since you're like, let's see here, uh... Nearly four minutes into the video, you're like, hey, this guy isn't completely unbearable. And if that's the case, could you tell my parents that so they'll talk to me? Or if talking to my parents is too much effort, just subscribe and like the video, because if I get enough subscribers, they'll let me stay out past 10 p.m. Suddenly you're Keanu Reeves. Heaven really does exist. After performing his set, he goes to relax by exploding Arasaka Tower with someone called Rogue. Interesting wind down activity, to be honest. In the end, he gets caught by Adam Smasher and Saburo, copy and paste his brain onto a hard drive using something called a soul killer. And now he's dead, I think. You know who? isn't dead though, it's you, despite having your face reconstructed by a 9mm round and it looks like you're in my life. Oh wait, no, it's just a shit doll. Deshaun is with God. He's with God now. The other guy's Takamura, he was Saburo's bodyguard. Not a very good one, I don't think. Anyway, Yorinobu tries to kill you both with these robotic fucks to cover up his dad murdering, but thanks to Takamura's bad driving, you survive and get Delamain to take you to Victor's because last time I checked, getting shot in the face and crashing a car wouldn't be considered healthy activities. After a few days in a coma, you wake up and Victor is like, Yeah, so that chip you put in your head, it's like a totally different person called Keanu Reeves. You mean the guy from The Matrix? That's amazing. You also have two weeks left to live. 
Oh. When you got shot, it damaged your brain, and the chip was like, hippity hoppity, your brain is now my property. You go home and try and sleep it off, which results in a schizophrenic Keanu episode. Better get used to that shit, because he's about to become more involved in your life than your dad is. I mean, it's- that's not a lot, but still. Then you meet with Takamura, he's like, Yorinobu is a massive dick. I would like to hurt him. I will help you hurt him if you help me not die. Agreed. You tell Takamura that you're going to look for Evelyn since it was her f***ing job that got you here in the first place, and Anders Hellman, because he apparently made the technology for the chip or something, while well, he thinks of a plan to bring Yorinobu to justice. I guess Keanu felt left out of the conversation because after that he's like, Ooh, ooh, go speak to Rogue, please. So I guess we have to do that too. First, let's find Evelyn. Judy tells you she works as a doll at Clouds. So she's like a Barbie. What's that? It's a brothel. Well, I'm just Ken. You don't find her there. The boss man directs you to a guy called Fingers, who looks exactly like I'd expect a guy named Fingers to look. Yeah, my thoughts exactly. She's not here either. She got kidnapped by some brain dance studio guys, so you have to buy porn to find her. Oh, well, this takes me back. After some pornographic free cam detective work, you find the studio, use them as target practice, and escape with Evelyn. She won't talk, but that's okay, because you can just invade her memories. I hope this technology never becomes real, because whoever ends up viewing my memories is going to need a therapist. You figure out she got the job to steal the chip from the voodoo boys, whoever they are, because they wanted Keanu to lead them to alt, whoever that is. Should I know who these people are? I've not been paying attention. With the help of a guy called Mr. Hands, you begin trying to set up a meet with the voodoo boys leader. He's a slow guy though, so while sorting that out, you go speak to Rogue, trying to follow a lead on Anders Hellman. For the small price of 15,000 quid, didn't realise I need a down payment on a mortgage just for the location of some nerd. Luckily, Mr. Hands got back to you saying that if you do a job for the voodoo boys, they will let you meet the boss. Job's pretty simple, so there's this van, and this guy, and... Yeah. The Voodoo Boys did try to kill you in the process by frying your brain, but you survive. How, you might be wondering? Keanu gives you a very realistic explanation. You just fucking grew up there. Maybe that's how you survived the gunshot to the face, too. Just manned up a bit. Now you can meet their leader. Ironically, the Voodoo Boys is run by a girl. Then again, it's 2077, so she could be a fucking fridge. She's aware of your head being comprised mostly of Keanu Reeves and takes you to the crypt. Whoa. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention the chip makes you cough up blood now. It's part of the dying DLC you've installed. As I said before, they want to find all She's apparently in a place called the Black Wall. You're like, whoa, whoa, you didn't mention the Black Wall. And I'm glad you know what the fuck she's talking about because I don't. So you have an ice bath that rekindles some of Keanu's memories. I'm going to give you a brief rendition since within the first minute he's fucking alt and I don't want YouTube policies to do the same to me. She gets kidnapped, he gets stabbed but survives and he's like, I have to save her to the guy who saved him. And he's like, uh, okay, yeah, duh. He gets rogue and young gravy and breaks into Arasaka Tower, but it's too late. She's dead. And this guy's like, oh, holy shit, this is going to get so many views. In case you're wondering why she was kidnapped is because she's a really good net runner and created Soul Killer, the AI that copied Keanu onto a USB stick. She's not really dead though, she scurried into the net or some bullshit. Now, the Voodoo Boys take you to contact Alt at the Black Wall, either that or they just slip some LSD into your drink. Then you meet Alt. Since she's the one who created Soul Killer, Keanu's like, Can't you fix him? And she's like, no, I'm some red pixels floating in the air. Nah, she says she can untangle both your consciousness using Mikoshi. Once again, no f***ing clue what that is, but whatever. So we need to find a path into Mikoshi while she makes a program to help us navigate the net. But first you need to have a chat with Keanu. When you first became roommates inside your head, he wanted to take over your body, but now he just wants you to get even with Arasaka. And you're like, why do you want this so bad? His excuse is pretty well-founded. They're cunts. If you remember, you needed a down payment for a mortgage to get Rogue's info on Hellman. And would you look at that? You've got it from somewhere. I definitely didn't do a bunch of side quests. She tells you that a rather the suspicious VIP is being transported by Kang Tao, and that suspicious VIP is Probs Hellman, but you can't kidnap him in Night City because it's under surveillance or some shit. Instead, she links you with Panam Palmer. I must have been quite thirsty when I wrote this because in the script it just says, Pana, Panam, Per, Palmer. Sexy music plays. I'm such a virgin. She won't help you until you help her get her stuff back from some ruffians. Panam is actually part of a group called the Aldecados, but because she's a bad bitch who could cheat on me with a personal trainer and leave me destitute and I'd still bark for her, I'd I don't know why that matters. Point is, she's not on speaking terms with them. Anyway, she asks them for help, but they say f*** off, so it's just you two. The job's not exactly difficult, though, especially since you have John Wick living in your head. Now, kidnapping this VIP is going to be difficult because he's in a flying car, and unless you plan on sprouting some fucking wings, that's out of your reach. Panam luckily has a plan. Just EMP the shit out of it. It doesn't really work, but Panam has a backup plan. That thing starts crashing, but Araldicado friends see it and decide to go investigate. One of them dies. It's very sad. And Hellman isn't even there. He escaped to a petrol station. You track him down and... That's the end of that. After a cheeky bit of questioning on whether he can sort your overcrowded head out, he's like, Hmm, this is unbelievable. I have no fucking idea what to do about this. What a waste of time that was. At least he was able to give you the blueprints of the biochip. And you have another schizophrenic Keanu episode. Overall, a solid day's work. Takamura tries to set up a meet with an old Arasaka friend who just so happens to be Yorinobu's sister's bodyguard. My old friend. I need your help. With no. 
I may have left some things out, but that's basically the gist of it. One thing this guy did mention is a parade in Japan Town, which Yorinobu's sister Hanako is attending, leading you to ask one of your contacts for intel about it. Can't lie, this was a good move because she knows this fucking parade better than I know the feeling of crippling loneliness. Nakamura comes up with a plan to break into Hanako's parade float to have a chat with her. Only problem is it's heavily guarded because she's, you know, sort of important. He goes for a mooch about and asks you to wait for his call, meaning you've got time to kill by going to help Panam with stuff for no reason. Don't judge me, it's my script. After your dealings with Hellman, she got back with the Aldecados. She originally left due to her disagreements with the leader, Saul, but he's been kidnapped and is probably on the verge of death, so we can put those disagreements aside for a sec. Anyway, you use your stealth DLC to break him out and escape to some secluded building where you tried to put the moves on Pan Am. Listen, I can explain. There was no other dialogue options. If anything, it's the dev's fault. She friend zones you anyway. This isn't the kind of realism I wanted from this game. She asks you for more help stealing a basilisk from Militech, and because you're not a simp, you tell her you're busy and... Oh god, I don't know how this got here. It must be one of those cyberpunk glitches that everyone talks about. Then you meet with Takamura, break into an Arasaka industrial park to stick a virus onto the parade float, and start the plan disguised as the only white man in Japan town, I guess. I think Takamura planned this mission so that he get all the easy jobs, because you have to take out three snipers watching over the parade and disable a netrunner, resulting in Hanako's bodyguard with lightsaber arms trying to kill you. Meanwhile, Takamura appears from nowhere. She won't listen to him, so he kidnaps her and takes her to a safe house. This is a bit embarrassing, but he told me to knock four times when I reached the safe house, and I just didn't listen, so died twice while trying to open the door. Yes, I went through this entire playthrough with zero deaths, only to die twice to a fucking door. You explain that her brother was trying to cash in on that corporate rich inheritance when Adam Smasher and his soldiers crash through the wall. You get saved by the floor caving in and escape into a brain aneurysm, while Takamura becomes part of the ecosystem. He's dead. I mean, when you wake up, you're in a motel and someone knocks at the door. It's, oh my God, who's this bitch? It's a proxy messenger thing from Hanako who's like, oh yeah, I believe everything you said. Could you believe us a bit sooner next time? Like before we nearly die. Because she believes you, she gives you info about Mikoshi. It's like a prison for personalities under Arasaka Tower and asks you to meet at a bar, but first you need to have another seizure, just in case you forgot that you're fucking dying or whatever. This time, Keanu steers the ship, brings you to his old safe house and makes a promise to get wiped in exchange for your life when the time comes, so long as you fuck Adam Smasher up. I'm guessing he never got over that one time. With that squared away, you go to meet Hanako, who offers to lead you to Mikoshi in exchange for killing Yorinobu. As you're leaving, you pass out and Keanu takes you to Victor's. I wish I could pass out and get Keanu to edit this video for me. So yeah, big surprise you're dead as fuck. Victor gives you some pills that put Keanu on sleep mode while you go do stuff and a gun in case you're feeling slightly self harming Then you go to the rooftop and think about life. Maybe mum was right. Not emptying the dishwasher had some serious consequences. You have to pick between meeting Hanako or storming Arasaka Tower with your finger in your bum and Panam shouting in the background, but since we agreed we're not simping over Panam, we're going to... Gosh darn it. Now you get to be an official Aldecado with a cool, probably dirty leather jacket that a previous member most likely died in. Plan is easy. Break into a building site using four tons of stolen basilisks, steal their drill the size of a small building, dig into a tunnel under Arasaka Tower, and hope no one fucking hears us. Alt gave you a shard that when put into an access point gives a control of everything, but before you can get to Makoshi, you're stopped by Adam Smasher. Adam Stomper. Adam fucking deader. You go to Makoshi with about 10% of your body functioning and plug yourself in and speak to Keanu. You know what? This isn't what I meant when I said I wanted Keanu inside What me. the f***? Alt split you up as soon as you jacked in, but the relic has apparently already progressed too far, so you've got about six months to live. She gives you the choice to give your body to Keanu or live for six months, and if you think I'm gonna let Keanu riz up Panam, then you've got another thing coming. Finally, you part ways and wake up in Panam's truck, and because you're a terminally ill patient with six months left to live, she agrees to sit on your face and you leave Night City with the Aldecados to partake in six months of face-sitting until you die of Keanuism. The end.